The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. We're glad you've joined us to see the new features that have been added to Student Manager and ACEWEB since last fall. I think the last time we chatted was in October. If you're new to these sessions, a Student Manager has monthly updates and ACEWEB is more on a quarterly schedule. And all of the details about these bug fixes and new enhancements are posted to the ACEWEB forum. I'd love to see a show of hands from everybody who is subscribed to the forum and uses the forum to check on those updates and new features. Can you give me a show of hands if you're using the forum? For those of you that don't know about the forum, you can drop me a note in chat and I'll certainly give you that information in a separate email. Okay, it looks like I need to follow up with a few people. Kristen, glad to see you're using the forum. Wesley had his had the hand up for a while. So I'll send some emails out. Make sure you all know how to take advantage of the forum to see everything that's new. And you can even subscribe to get email notifications when those new releases come out. So you're the first to know. But today, Matthew's here and he's going to talk about what's in the last three releases. The most recent release that came out in January is 107. So you can check to see where you are in Student Manager and see if you want to upgrade and, or update to get those new features. And Stein is going to share some of the new goodies in ACEWEB 67, which we hope to get out even today. That's being worked on as I talk. Um, if you have questions along the way today, drop those in the chat box and I can get those to Matthew and or Stein. Cheryl's on as well today. And a reminder that we are recording this session and we'll have it posted to our webinar archives before the end of the week. So Matthew, I'm going to get quiet now and let you share the good things that are in these new, uh, new releases since October. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it has been a little while since we've uh, had one of these we update webinars, so uh, glad to be here. Um, <clears throat> so, first thing I wanted to point out, uh, and this is 105, so that would have went out in November, um, beginning of November. Uh, so the first item I've got is that the course search screen now has location. It is clear over on the right of your screen. Uh, so if you do have a wider uh, screen, you'll see it automatically without having to scroll. Um, but otherwise, you do have to scroll a little bit to, uh, to see it. Um, <clears throat> payment types. Seems like Every time we add payment types, you guys want more. So we've added a few more to hopefully get you guys through whatever you need to do. These are uh, user defined or institution defined. It's not um, their global preferences, all of these, uh, as far as naming them, the <clears throat> well, naming them and then using them in the, uh, the drop down. Uh, so automatically, when you when you install 105 or 106 or 107, wh whichever update you're you're getting next, uh, the new payment types are deselected from the dropdown. Uh, so you do have to go in uh, to your preferences, give them a name of other I, other J, other K doesn't really mean anything, but whatever you're using those for. But then also in the middle, don't forget to uh, check mark to, to make them active in the drop downs. <clears throat> Fee category. So we were running into an issue with the hybrid courses where you know you'd have two separate senior citizen fee categories or or, or staff fees you know, one for the physical and one for, for hybrid. So we've changed that to be a begins with basis when looking at at that uh, fee name. 
So you can have your senior citizen fee on all your courses. On hybrid courses, it just needs to start with senior citizen fee. So senior citizen fee dash physical would work. Uh, senior citizen fee dash virtual would work or whatever you want to call those just as long as it begins with the the senior citizen fee or whatever fee category you're doing I'm I just did this as as an example so um, so it's a little bit of a behavior change but uh, it it it's to help out with in particular hybrid but maybe even some other situations they might help you out with for those so um, let, me uh, just, let me just jump in here and mention that uh, that was supposed to be fixed in AceWeb as well, um, but it's not going to make this release. It'll have to go in the next one. So we, we'll, we're working on it. Okay. Good thing to point out. Uh, the next thing uh, is I've totally revamped the WYSIWYG HTML editor in Student Manager. So the different places, especially with um, your catalog codes, uh, this is an example of a catalog description uh, being edited here. <clears throat> but uh, went to using all buttons uh, in this. Um, so it's, yeah, not as clunky. All the buttons are, are uh, <clears throat> you know, just like you would see in Word and, and uh, many of your other applications um so you you get the gist of it from just the picture uh format color and font those have been switched to drop downs before they were a button and then you would have to choose which you wanted to do actually i don't even think format was a choice but uh there are more options here <clears throat> excuse me uh the T capital T X button, that's a clear formatting. Uh, I just want to make sure you know, though, select a little bit more than what's uh, needing to be reformatted, uh, like especially if it's a color or something like that. Select a little bit more when you're doing the, the clear formatting uh, because it's tricky sometimes to get all that HTML uh, cleared out of that section. But uh, the undo button uh, has been there for quite a while. I would definitely, if you, you know, the very last thing you did was a mistake, hit that undo button rather than trying to mess with that the uh, clear formatting. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there are a few other new things that have been added here. Um, I can't think of what they all are off the top of my head, but yeah, more choices, more things to do, more more things you can do with your your HTML stuff. And part of the reason why we're doing this is HTML editing for emails. I've added the generate HTML for each section, but the email body section it has to be the the pound pound format uh the if you're still if it's still an old style uh with the quote you know quotes plus function plus you know all that stuff that doesn't play very nice with html editing in general so if you've got your or you're you're trying to do a brand new email and uh, um, don't mind doing it with the the hashtags uh, notation go to that that and then you can use the generate html to to play with some of your html coding um, i think this example i have here just has breaks um, line breaks so not anything too much but if you wanted to you know, color code things, especially the money, make those green. I don't know, whatever you want to do, you can you can change that. Um, oh, maybe bold the the um, uh, the labels like workshops, time, bold those things. You can do that. 
uh, next thing, so departments in, I think that was 104, so that would have been October-ish. Um, we made the change of putting the, the departments as a longer uh, field. So the description or the code description was the only thing we offered. Um, some of you guys have pushed back on us for doing that change. They, you want your simple department codes of, you know, whatever anagram you want to put. Um, so what I've done is I've opened up the detail field so that you can still have your short code, put that in the description, but then the detail you can put the longer, you know, whatever that acron big long acronym actually is, you can you can put that in um, the detail. <clears throat> and then, yeah, uh, plenty of space in the details. So XLS output, XLS X output. Uh, really, it's same same procedure you have been doing. It's just that with 106, we've made it better. It's faster for one thing, cleaner in that it's not generating this temporary XML file and then converting that XML file to uh, to to the XLSX. Um, so yeah, that that little temp file can sometimes create issues because it, we were seeing especially with long um, or a lot of data fields and a lot of data is it would start generating that XML file and it would at some point just break, just stop running. Student manager still had the, you know, the mouse was still spinning in a circle uh, type thing and it acted like it was still generating that file, but that XML file was not getting any bigger. Um, so this, just circumvents even doing that. So uh, less prone to breaking, less uh, just less moving pieces, and it's going to be faster. So yeah, up update to at least 106. Get that um, if you do a lot of XLSX outputting. Be active. Oh, and I should throw out there XLSX. The one thing you really need with it is anytime you want to export memo fields and that was what was slowing you know they could be a lot slower outputting those so definitely with this improvement those are going to be faster so be active so this is similar to the fee expires except it's an active um well in my example here i have it set to date but it's actually it, in the database, it's a number. So that's why you see a 1994 date on this course. It's the number of days before the, the begin date. And I've defaulted every single course to have 9999 uh, as that number of days. So that's, that's why you, see, you might see a whole bunch of 1994 dates. Really, as long as that active date is today or in the past that's going to have that fee show up but if you set that in the future then maybe you have a late registration fee that you want to get you know only start charging like five days before the class begins so you can set you know this i said use the same settings here on the 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 slide here there is a setting that you can show expires and active as number of days or as a date so i've got it set as a date so <clears throat> um so put in you know let's say that this course started august 11th 2021 put in august um uh, august 6th 2021 uh so you're charging five days before uh that late fee or you know you can do this for other things maybe you want 
a specific membership, um, but they they can only come in. Maybe they want the members to be from the very beginning. You know, have have their registration. Only members can register starting today. But then your other your registration fee, staff fee, early bird, and all those others, those start in the future. So you could do that have those be active later and that way your members get this other perk of they get to come in first you know things like that um i'm sure there's other things you can do with this but those are the couple of scenarios that come to my mind uh where you would want to use that fee active date or days um going forward catch all so this is just a couple of things uh, we've noticed just kind of bizarrely in a couple of databases where workshop individual codes um, had duplicates so needed a way to clean those up and so added those to the catch-all and then duplicate room use not sure at all how the heck these people were able to do this but um anyway we ran into a couple of scenarios there um hopefully every time you run this you see a zero next to those two things but if not hey we've got the tool that automatically is cleaning those up so <clears throat> print certificates and actually this is anything when you select you know user by user this is from course quick reports you're running whichever the certificates well certificates is what this uh would be the most beneficial for but when you hit the select so you're selecting users you can see now the print certificate field um in in this screen so all these people haven't had their certificates printed yet so that's uh uh, that would be good for all of these people to to get their certificates printed. But you know, if you've ran this once and then somebody registered late and you go back in and it's like, oh, this person is the only one that doesn't have their certificate printed, uh, you can just select that one person and and run just for that one person. So hopefully some si time saving and paper saving uh, going on there outstanding invoices this is so this is a new preference uh on the pay tab of your preferences if you want to see the outstanding invoices right when you start up student manager so that you can start dealing with them first thing in the morning uh you can now do that uh you can also um you know still run through you know the outstanding invoice routine um but this also then allows you to have it, you know, right there at the beginning of the day, here's the people that still owe us money and start calling, you know, well, the United States of America, I need to find out more information before we start calling them up. Uh, but, you know, entities like Charles Havlicek II, yeah, call him up, let's get some money out of him and so on and so forth on down the line. Um, so, yeah. Certificate wizard, um, th this has been, Chuck has been doing some enhancements uh, to it, uh, doing some re rejiggering with it, but mainly adding in a third criteria. Uh, so you've got, you know, um, three, three buckets of grouping codes and they need a certain number of, of courses out of each bucket. Uh, we can now handle up to three three buckets uh, to do that so that you can just see the people that have qualified for that certificate. Additionally, um, well, and I think this has been there for a while, but you know, when, once they, the person gets a specific credential uh, and you can set the title down there, skip names with credential title equal, uh, so you give them that credential of this certificate 
then it'll skip showing those people in the future. So uh, you're not printing, you know, year after year, more and more, you know, repeats of of people because you've assigned that credential to those people, and they no longer get get uh, shown on this report. So, so a good thing to have if you're doing this uh, certificate wizard. Uh, show TF. This is actually something uh, Stein was doing in Ace Web. Um, have it say on or off versus true or false. And so I mimicked the behavior for student manager because I figure, you know, if you guys are asking for it for Ace Web, you're eventually going to want it for student manager. So this is just uh, uh, an extra option. And it's the second parameter show TF whatever field comma two is what will show on off uh if you don't pass a second parameter or i think the second parameter can be zero and that'll be true false uh one wait now i might be backwards anyway consult the help guide because i think one says one is yes no and I think no second parameter is true false, but double check me on the help guide because I might be wrong. Ah, so next thing I wanted to show, limit membership discounts. Um, this is a new module that we're putting together in Student Manager. So let me pull up the membership course here. Um, so this is dealing with, with your member code. So let's say I've got a, a ACE Club membership going on here, but once somebody signs up for the ACE Club membership, I only want them to have that for a certain number of courses. So maybe it's five or it's um, two or something. So membership, uh, member me, membership uh where's it at oh i don't think i have it turned on ah um this is what i get for refreshing my demo right before doing a webinar and I thought I had this set up right. Um, let me see if I can go in. <clears throat> All right. You guys still see my screen, don't you? See a whole bunch of hoopla going on here. Yes, um, we're seeing you. Okay, great. So add edit codes and if i go here to member codes yeah this is the thing max use per person so i could set this to five I, for testing purposes i only had it set at one but anyway for, you could have five ten however many uses they want so they are limited to only being able to use this code this membership that many times so they can only enroll in 10 courses with this discount after those 10 courses they have to pay the regular fee or maybe they've got another membership bundle out there that they can sign up for so it kind of kind of gives them or it kind of gives you an ability to to set a, an upper limit on that um so that they're not abusing it um you know taking a hundred courses and getting a discount for all hundred courses and you're you're losing money at that point um so yeah you this helps uh helps you from losing money um and since this is an optional module uh um you'll need to contact sharon about getting getting the module signing up for it um and and getting a cost for it uh ace web will ha i think this is ready for 67 isn't it stein yes it is 
hope Great. to hope to demo it shortly. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I won't steal any more thunder from Stein. So going on. Email link to pay outstanding. Uh seems like I keep making changes to this routine. And okay, so this is my demo. Uh so what I have done, let me go see the actual template. Um because it's been tied to a template for a while now. Um, but the link link to pay out. Uh, so it used to be, uh, so you'd have your header be an introduction, and then you'd have your footer. The middle was going to be just this this pay outstanding link generated each time. We've or I've changed it, and I've automatically done this for you. Uh, to where it puts the pound pound payout stand link pound pound it at the beginning of your footer so it would show up at the same spot it used to but now you could put in details of what courses they have an outstanding balance on so if they've got um, you know three or four courses it's showing hey these are the three or four courses or however many courses and how much is still due and paid, or how much was due and paid on each of those. Uh, so let me see, I've got, uh, the, the, who was my, no, she wasn't it. Um, was Jason? Okay, I think this is it, okay. So if I hit the email link to pay outstanding, and since this is HTML, it's a little hard to see, but you've got extend student manager with ACE web, and then extend student manager with, okay, so he's got two different extend student manager with ACE web um, on his registration, or in his registrations that have an outstanding balance, both have 230. Uh, so you can send that and then of course the html gets properly formatted on in their um, um email client but so if i hit courses taken yeah so all these courses with the the uh total due total paid offsetting each other aren't in there and oh and i guess i have it in so i have a begin date here of june of 2022 that didn't show up in in the list because you know that's not actually outstanding quite yet but he does still owe on that but free courses don't show up the ones that are totally paid and future courses don't show up in that so it's only the outstanding um uh balances show up any questions let's see i think that's my last any questions? I'm not seeing any questions, but lots of good work, Matthew. I think that the out, pay outstanding invoices link is is amazing, and thanks for adding some future some enhancements to that to you know add some more information. Um, do ask questions, folks, if you have them. I'm going to turn presentation rights over to Stein, and while I do that, I'm going to give a shout out to ICP, the International Center for Photography. They are have representation here today. And they are the ones who were asking about adding some limits to the membership discounts. And so that module was, was built with them in mind. And we're going to see if any of other, if the rest of you can benefit from that as well. But so if you have great ideas or new things you want in your program, certainly let us know because we are glad to work with you and see if others in our customer list might appreciate those items as well. So Stein, I'm not seeing any additional questions right now. You can tell us what's coming out in 67, which hopefully releases today. Okay, um, you're seeing uh, a screen I with a uh, uh, test aceware site here saying your logo at the top. We are, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, we've got a few uh, 
more major enhancements, which I'll try to walk through, and then a, a whole slew of minor ones, which we'll maybe just mention a, a couple of those. Um, all right, uh, we have uh, extended some proxy registration support to uh, a couple of our uh, peripheral pages here. Um, I'm going to log in here. And uh, if we go to uh, my courses and then the registration history page, uh, we've got some various options of things that we can do with courses that uh, either upcoming or have been taken. Uh, we've always had these options down here. You can look at stuff, obviously, that you've enrolled in for yourself. But if you have made proxy registrations for someone else, maybe uh, you, you know, proxy reg for your kids or uh, you're the HR person at the company and you've done proxy regs for the other employees uh, and you want to look at those, you can see those by either going to all registrations. If you do all registrations, you'll get yours and you'll see the proxy people that you've put uh, uh, registered for. And that's been, uh, we've had that for quite a while. But some of these other options over here, uh, seeing your payments in the past, um, oh, let's see, let's go back to listing all. Um, actually, it did show, if you wanted to, uh, you, it did show the payments you've made, but this option over here to print receipts was kind of a um, uh, a bogus button because it wouldn't really print the receipt for your proxy registrations. It made you think you could, but you couldn't. And it now does. If I hit this, I should get a receipt for Bill Smith's um, proxy and um, here or Bill Smith's registration, and here it is paid up receipt. So, um, so that now works. Um, and then in the, uh, a couple of the other things we have over here are the AWS storm options, the certificates and transcript options, uh, the certificates, uh, in the past did not show the proxies. It, uh, it would only, if you had, certificates for courses, enabled for courses you'd taken, it would show them. Actually, I don't have any here, but Nancy and Bill, my proxies, both do. So I can go over here and grab the certificate, and which of course, if you had registered your kids for the swimming class and they passed and you wanted to get their certificate, you'd really like to just be able to go online and do it, which you can now. Uh, so, uh, Proxies work uh, for the certificates. And then for the transcripts, uh, transcripts, you can, of course, get your own transcript that you've always been able to do. If you try to get all the transcripts, that's a little tricky because our transcript routine is set up to generate just a single transcript at a time. However, uh, you can go down here and say, registrations I entered for others, and you now get a drop down, which shows your proxies, and you can pick, you know, one of the proxies, and then go for their transcript. And hopefully we're going to get out of this, end up getting Bill's transcript, and here it is. So. Uh, that now is <clears throat> has been uh, extended, both the certificates and transcripts. Uh, we have the options, as well as the receipts uh, will work with proxy registrations. So, okay. Uh, now the, uh, the thing of uh, allowing a activation date for fees. Um, we're going to go over here and uh, see if we can pull up a course that demonstrates that. Um, let's 
happens to be one down at the bottom here, and it's one of these processing credit cards, I believe this one. All right, so if we go to the processing credit card course, we've had set up one of those fees that has a, an activation date coming up in the future, namely uh, next Monday. And you'll notice here, registration fee is active, that's fine, but the special staff fee is not gonna kick in until Monday and it shows you that it's there, it shows you it's coming, but you can't actually select yet. <clears throat> so uh, that feature does work on the, uh, on the ACE website. Um, <clears throat> as, uh, as I mentioned before, the other feature that we hope to have in here, but it uh, ran into some uh, issues at the last minute, was the uh, <clears throat> issue with uh, the uh, uh, special um, uh, fee options like senior fees, uh, uh, where they would, uh, if you have a single one, it's fine, but if you have multiple ones, still isn't quite working right in ACEWeb, so that will be coming. <clears throat> okay, then the membership limits things. Uh, so for that, uh, I'm going to need to go back here and um, grab a course. Why didn't one come up? Um, my program. Okay. Um, let's see, memberships. So I'm gonna to need to have a membership <clears throat> in order to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna enroll myself in the ACE Club. So I'm going to save that to the cart and then <clears throat> I'm gonna add more courses. Uh, I believe we've got under the ACEware users, a couple of options here that um, are, are special membership courses. Uh, what about mastering February student? one? What? The February one. Yeah. Mastering student manager. I'm going to enroll myself. And you'll notice that this does have a member fee, but it is telling me Ace Club members only get two courses at the discounted rates. Now I haven't I just put myself, put that course on my cart, so I'm a new member so i haven't used any of them so i'm going to save this one to the card oh but i have to take a digression here because we're demonstrating another feature with this course we've got a required upload now this was a feature developed for icp it is not uh generally available uh for uh but if you want the uh a uh, to contact Sharon if you're if you're interested in this we we will definitely uh, be willing to customize it for uh, your site as well but uh, so just keep in mind that what you get now is not gonna what you're seeing here is not gonna work in uh, standard ACE web but notice that we've got a couple of options here that are required and I'm trying to save this to the cart and it's not going because I haven't checked this required box, but when I try to check it, it won't let me. Uh, it has to, uh, it uh, requires that I actually upload this record before I can verify that I've uploaded it. So I'm going to go here to upload vaccination records, <clears throat> and I get a separate page, and an option, a page, uh, a sequence here to uh, actually allow uploading. So I'm gonna choose the file I wanna upload. Um, and we'll just pretend this was an actual fax record and I'm going to upload it. Okay, now we'll go back here. And when I click this, notice I can now check the box. All right. Now it also needs a photo, so I better go do that one. <clears throat> and uh, choose the file for the photo. Uh, we'll go with that image. 
and upload that one. All right, so, and that process is actually uploading that, in this case, to our uh, demo server. Uh, and in your, in a production case, it will go on to uh, <clears throat> the server in your uh, student manager folder under a name, under the subfolder name docs. And then again, th that will have subfolders uh, for each of your, with uh, based on the user's name ID. And in that folder, you'll find their uploads. So it's up there. We'll go back to the enrollment card. And hopefully, yes, we can check the box now. And now I can save it to the cart. <clears throat> those, All right. Those documents are also available in the name docs area under the name record too, right? Uh, well, it's the name docs and then the subfolder with the name ID and but, then in that folder, right? No, I'm saying in on the student manager name screen itself, you got that name docs do, uh, button, uh, additional documents button where it has those name docs. You can access those from there, right? From student manager. Well, I I don't know about the student manager side, but uh, hopefully <clears throat> it should if we're work, if we got this working right. Yeah. Ah, you're talking. Ah, there's a. Does it also write to the name docs database table? Is that what you're saying? Right. Right. Yes, it does. It does. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it uploads the documents, puts it in the folder, and makes a record, notes it on this on the in our database so that you can see it in Student Manager. Yes. Good, good point. Okay, so uh let's see, we're gonna add uh another course here um let's see i've got one called um uh, extend student manager again we'll go with the february course enroll ourselves. and uh, note here now we're entitled to the membership rate for just one because we've already got that one other one on the cart and uh also note that the upload is noted. We did the upload, so these are pre-checked. We don't have to go through this again. So we're going to save that to cart. And we're going to try to add just one more just for the heck of it. And uh, got one called processing. A square users down to the processing. And again, the February course. And it lets us register but we don't get that member discount this time you've already used the discounts please choose a different fee so if i want to take this one i'm going to have to pay that extra 25 bucks so <laughs> so uh that feature is there and again um that will it, it will be a, a, an add-on module if you're interested uh, Okay, so I think those were the main things. Oh, I had one uh, kind of a side thing here. Administrative logon. If uh, you're logging in for the staff web access things or for the uh, the viewer or the INI editor, those special utilities that only staff gets to come into, uh, we did have a situation that if a staff person was inactive, they were uh still being allowed to um get into those features which was not a good security situation but uh here's rosie who we've inactivated and we're just going to check here and it just tells her that her authentication failed but um that just uh demonstrates that um uh, this inactive user cannot no longer get into the uh, special uh, <clears throat> uh, staff uh, web access features. So, uh, otherwise, uh, there's a long list of smaller bugs 
bug fixes and some some of which are pretty obscure that hopefully nobody's much uh, unless you're the unlucky person that happened to stumble across them you probably don't even know about them there was a situation with voided invoices showing up on the invoice payment screen in ace web uh that should no longer happen uh there was uh on the welcome page if you use the member status function it was uh actually uh completely failing and the screen was timing out and that has been fixed uh unlimited udfs the function that demonstrates those we were having an issue in certain cases i believe under this was under sql where the udf was simply not going up and that supposedly works uh we've fixed some issues with or um at least made it easier to handle cases where your udfs might appear as truncated um you just see part of the the string um and um those were things that would show up say on your reg udfs where you i mean so your reg register confer, confirmation emails uh where you wanted to use the uudf and and we're sometimes getting uh, uh, inconsistent results that should be fixed now uh the core status page can show uh, demo, uh allows you to add a couple more fields on there so you can make that a little uh, richer if you want to and uh, uh an encryption issue with nm code 2 has been resolved so a bunch of those uh, small items um uh, should be taken care of and uh, and as i said uh, as, as they said uh, that should all hopefully be available later today so i think that's yeah. what i've got very good some great new things for all of you mm -hmm. in this these new releases and I have several of you, I'm giving you a chance, I'm babbling here, giving you a chance to ask some questions, but I have several of you that have asked for information on the forum. I will send that to you directly after the webinar here. If there's no other questions, gosh, there's a short survey. Uh, I'm hoping you all will get updated to the latest and greatest versions of Manager and AceWeb, and we'll look forward to Cheryl's note, hopefully later this afternoon, that. Uh, 67 is out the door and ready for you to use. Uh, Stein, Cheryl, Matthew, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on this. And uh, I hope all of you have marked February 16th, 2 o'clock p.m. Central Time on your calendars for a webinar on coding tips and techniques. That's a highly requested topic. And so I know we will talk to you soon and see you soon. With that, we'll say goodbye. Have a great afternoon and great weekend coming up, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.